To all those people watching, I'd like to remind everyone that this video is not made for kids. It's for older fans and adults. Enjoy the fucking video! Originally, I was going to make a video talking about the history of Tugs in celebration of its 35th anniversary. But then after seeing ITH Productions' Tugs A Big Retrospective documentary, which I recommend watching, as well as the ebook The History of Tugs, link for it is in the description, I realised that maybe people don't want another video documenting history of the show, as it has been told many times before. And so, I decided to share my own personal history of Tugs, with how I first discovered it, along with merch that I collected over the years, and what's my most favourite episode of the show. This is my personal history with Tugs. Whenever you hear people talk about how they got into Tugs, they would usually say they got into it through Thomas the Tank Engine, as of course the show was created by the same people who had adapted the Railway Series books and the tag on all the Tugs VHS tapes. But how I got into Tugs was not through Thomas the Tank Engine. It all started with this character. Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. In December 2001, Foxtel, my cable provider here in Australia, had launched Disney Channel. And I remember on launch day at 6am in the morning, Playhouse Disney was the first block they played. And Theodore Tugboat was the first show of the day. However, these episodes didn't have the Harbour Master segments played by the late Denny Dohey as shown on PBS Kids in North America. Theodore Tugboat was the first show that started Disney Channel's run in Australia on Foxtel, and I enjoyed watching it. In 2002, I was keen to see more episodes, and every Wednesday night I would go to Video Easy with my family while going to get takeout. Video Easy was Australia's video rental store chain back in the day, alongside Blockbuster. They never had any Theodore tapes, and they were never really in Australia, so I would go for a Thomas tape instead. But there was a Tugboat tape there, but it looked very different to Theodore. And this is where I discovered Tugs, and I had the Buzz book kidnapped at home as well, however it was scribbled and with a page ripped. But Video Easy is where I pinpoint the start of the interest to the show. The tape was Sunshine and Pirate. At first I wasn't interested because it wasn't Theodore, but then a week later I began to feel keen on seeing it after reading the kidnap book, and so the next week I rented the tape, and from my first viewing I couldn't stop watching it and fell in love with the show. I later found other tapes at a different video store in the town of Jeringong on the south coast of New South Wales called Top Video. At first I thought Sunshine Pirate Munitions on 4th of July were the only tapes in existence due to them being only displayed on Castle Vision's promo for them. But when I found the likes of Trap, Ghost, High Winds, Jinx, Quarantine Up River, and High Tide, Warrior, Big Freeze, I was surprised and excited to know that there were more episodes. I didn't hire them at first because you have to be a member but my dad eventually became one when I went down there a second time for a get-together at a beach house the next town over. The tapes that I hired were Jinx Quarantine Up River and High Tide Warrior Big Freeze. From then on, whenever we go on holiday to the south coast to visit family, we would usually stop at Jeringong so I could rent the tape, and I would usually choose the green one since I enjoyed that one out of the rest due to an episode that I called a personal favourite. I'll discuss about it later. I would end up buying the videotapes on eBay around 2003, as well as some of the photo books and buzz books. I sort of stopped around that time and I think I didn't reignite my collecting interest until about the early 2010s, when I had my first job after high school. Around 2012, I managed to buy some Tugs merchandise from Japan, such as the toys and some videos. But the best part of my own collection of Japanese merch is all 13 individual copies of Tugs episodes that were sold in stores. But what really makes it unique was that the covers weren't infamously sunbleached. These came to me on December 21st, 2012. And if you guessed what was supposed to happen on that day, you deserve a veteran's discount for that. To those younger, it was the day the Mayan calendar was supposed to end its cycle and something about the world coming to an end? Anyway, back to Tugs. I also managed to get the full volume tapes as well. The last Tugs item I bought was this 10 cents toy in 2015. 
During the 2010s, I've been listening to the Tugs audio production series from SIF, and personally, I've always loved Chimera. If you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend it. The audio quality isn't perfect, but you will love it. It's a very Tug story. So that's my own personal history with Tugs. I loved the show back in 2002, and I still do now. Now I'll tell you about my favorite episode of the whole series, and that is Jinxed. Ever since I was a kid, I always loved this episode, and I really can't remember why though. But as an adult and reading the episode review by Tugs the Exhibition on their blog site, Ryan Hagen's view had made me appreciate the episode more with the likes of Boomer. He's a tugboat who was downed and out of luck due to the superstition that he was jinxed after his name change, and many things had gone against him such as cranes, explosives, and a burnt out schooner. Even though the episode was supposed to be for laughs, you can sympathize with Boomer, and when he got turned into a houseboat and the jinx was gone, you cheered for him. Why I appreciate this episode more as an adult is because at the time when Ryan's review was published, I had a few setbacks myself, and the storyline was encouraging, and it made Jinx my favorite. Because at the end of Ryan's review, he mentioned about how unemployment in the UK at the time of the episode's airing was a difficult time. And that end piece got me a bit emotional when he wrote that message of the episode, is that no matter how tough everything is, things will get brighter in the end, and there are people who care about you. That's why Jinx Today is my favorite episode. As of this video's upload, I'm still looking for work, but Jinx is the sort of episode that gives you hope. And I thank Dave Mitten for writing such a great story. If I have to choose my least favorite, it would have to be Quarantine, and it's mainly for its plot as it was more focused on OJ with his engine trouble, and Burke and Blair being the grim reapers of the harbor. The Quarantine plot of the story just felt so thin. In my opinion, the episode should have been about OJ, and maybe the subplot should be about Top Hat trying to persuade Captain Star to not sell OJ to scrap, as this monitor shot from Wikia is said to be from the episode. From what I remember hearing, Top Hat was supposed to progress as a character during the show, and this could have been his moment. I could discuss other episodes here, but I think that might be useful for another video next time. Despite being short-lived, Tugs had definitely touched the lives of many people who had seen it with its wonderful, detailed setting, its interesting behind-the-scenes history and enjoyable stories. The legacy that is Tugs still lives on through so much of the Thomas fandom, being videos, fan art, or fan-made stories. Tugs was set out to become the next big thing, and even though it hadn't achieved that, it certainly was a big thing for those who had enjoyed it since childhood. This is Tugs.